Hey friends and fam, welcome back to the channel. As you saw by the title of the video, I am getting ready for my first powerlifting meet. I'm just under a week out and I thought I would do something a little bit different with this video. I'm gonna take a couple minutes in this talking head style to just share some information with you as far as what a powerlifting meet is and kind of a little background as to why I chose it for my physical challenge number three. And then I'm gonna take you along with me kind of vlog style in my preparation for the meet. So let's go ahead and get started with exactly what powerlifting is. So possible <laughs> Yeah, sung it. Powerlifting consists of three main things, the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. For a powerlifting meet, you'll do those movements each three times for a total of nine lifts. And what you do is you start with what they call your opener, which is your first attempt, and then your second attempt needs to be either the same or greater than your first attempt, and your third attempt needs to be either the same or greater than your second attempt, and then they will add all three weights up that were successfully done, and that is your total score for that particular movement. All right, let's talk about why I decided to go with a powerlifting meet. I chose a powerlifting meet for two different reasons. First and foremost, it's something where I'm just competing against myself. It's me fighting those negative thoughts of not being able to do something and really pushing to see what my mind and my body can do. The second reason is it scares the living sh out of me and my reason for this is that it's so unlike anything else i've ever done in any of these other sports there's always at least one other person involved a running event or a triathlon event there's always a ton of people in front of you behind you whatever it may be there's never really a situation where all eyes are on you and in this scenario, that's exactly what this is. You step up to the platform, you have referees watching you, there's a crowd of people watching you, and you've got to do your thing. And that is really scary for me. So it's something where I'm really pushing myself out of my comfort zone and just challenging myself to overcome all of those negative thoughts, get out there and do the best that I can. Real quickly, I wanna talk about how I trained for this meet. Like I said, I signed up in May, but I didn't start training until after the MRF, so that was in June. I decided that I was too new to this and didn't wanna spend the money on getting a coach, but I went ahead and purchased an app called Juggernaut AI. This app was a little more expensive than I expected an app to be, but I was really intrigued by the AI aspect, and it has done a really good job of walking me through the different movements and making sure that I test my strength at different points so that I know when it's time to move up to the next weight and I've really been happy with it so far. So the training did consist of all of these movements but additional movements as well. I would say the training works out to about an hour five times per week. All right, let's talk regulation. While I'm not going there to do anything spectacular, there are people that go to these things that compete for world records and just prizes and against each other. So there are multiple federations all over the place that regulate these things. For this particular meet, there's a regulation book that is like super long and tells you what you can and can't do down to the type of underwear you can wear. I don't wanna to get too deep into that, but I do wanna share some information about the equipment. The meat requires that you wear what's called a singlet, and this is quite possibly the most unflattering piece of equipment there is on the planet. I bought it all in black, hoping that it's gonna hide some of the pudge, but you know, I'm just not planning on looking in a mirror at that day. And then um, underneath that, you have to wear a shirt. So I chose a short kind of crop shirt. A crop shirt is not something that I would normally wear out of my house in any given situation, probably not even in my house. But the reason for that is that it's much easier to kind of tuck into the singlet rather than having a bunch of stuff bunching up around your waist. For both the squat and the deadlift, you generally will wear a weightlifting belt. Now they had very particular restrictions on what you could and could not have. I had a belt that I was using, but it didn't meet those requirements. So I ended up having to find a new belt and purchase that. The trouble that I had is I'm vegan and most of those belts are made out of leather, but luckily enough, I was able to find a place called strengthshop.com that did carry a vegan lifting belt and I was able to get this beauty. For the squat, you are also allowed to wear knee sleeves and let me tell you, you have not lived until you've tried to put these knee sleeves on. 
There are special weightlifting shoes for the squat, so I did a little research and found that a company that I already had a different shoe in made them, and I decided to go with that. So they have this little wedge here that kind of helps with your foot position and getting deeper in the squat. For the deadlift, you need to wear a flat-soled shoe. A lot of people will wear Converse um, shoes, and I do have those, but I don't like the way that they kind of squish your feet in the toe box. When I'm lifting, I really like to be able to have my foot kind of spread out and give myself a little more stability. So I went ahead and used a shoe that I already had for weightlifting um, that has a nice flat sole. For the deadlift, you're also required to wear long socks. It's Halloween themed, so I got these beauties here. I also have a plain black pair because these seem a little long, um, so we'll see how that goes. But essentially, the reason for this is that when you're deadlifting the bar, you're keeping it close to your shins, and it's a very knurled bar. So this just kind of helps that when you step up, you're not walking up to a bar with someone else's shin skin on it. There are other little odds and ends of equipment pieces, but for the most part, these are the main things that you need. Now, I did not have these things before I started training. The only thing I had were the flat-soled shoes that I was already using. So what I did is I made these kind of a little reward for myself. As I finished a month of training, I would give myself X dollars to go ahead and buy the next piece of equipment that I would need. And then by the time I got to just the month before the meet, I've had everything that I need so that I can test it out and make sure works well for me on meet day. So that's it for this talking head portion. Like I said, I'm going to take you along kind of vlog style for the rest of my preparation. So I will see you when it's time to pack. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the meet is actually located like a three hour drive north of us. Um, and the meet is on Saturday, but I have to be there Friday afternoon for check-in, weigh-in, and then having my equipment inspected. So hubby couldn't take the day off Friday. Um, I did, so the most cost-effective way for me to get up there is to take a train. Uh, I've never done that before, <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna do. Today's Thursday, I'm gonna go pack my bag with just the stuff that I need for check-in and kind of for the train ride. If anything else fits in there, great. If not, um, that stuff I'm gonna pack up in the car so that when hubby comes up after work on Friday, I'll have everything else that I need up there at that point in time. I forgot to mention, I'm also gonna pack up a backpack later tonight with just the stuff for entertainment, like on the train. Um, I'm planning to do some video editing and stuff like that. So I'll bring my laptop, my iPad, and then obviously my camera equipment because I'm gonna try to vlog as much of this as I can. This is Ricky. I guess we're going by a wall. It's oh, better. We have transformed into a chill station.
I decided to lay down for a little bit because it moves around a lot and wasn't feeling so great. I don't know if it's a motion sickness thing, but laying down will for a little bit, but I'm gonna see if I can get some stuff done. For lunch, so let's go see how that vegan meal is. Five hours later. Alright, so quick room tour. We got a bathroom over here. Pretty standard. Mirror. Beds. A little office space. It's fridge, I think. Yeah, nothing fancy. It's 4.07, um, check-in started at 4. The train was over an hour late, unfortunately. So now I'm just gonna take this stuff out of my bag, put it in the backpack so that I'm kind of compact and leave my laptop and all that kind of stuff here and head over to the weigh-in and have my equipment checked. I'm feeling, um, I don't know. I'm trying to let, not let trying to not let the negative thoughts come in. It's just feeling more real, obviously, now to head there. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna do that and then head out. I'm off to weigh in. Ah, just got back from the check-in and weigh-in, and that was very interesting. Um, it's very intimidating. I didn't film any of it because I, I don't even think I would have been allowed to, but um, I, my nerves were just too high to try to achieve that at the same time of what I was doing. So um, there's one single stage um, and everything set around it and then there's like a back area and they were asking for bits of information that I didn't really know so um, I asked somebody for some help and the people were really 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 nice and they were saying that they want more people to be interested in lifting and it's a very beginner friendly competition and you know they're excited when they see somebody new so that was really nice um, still very <laughs> intimidating so um, they inspected every piece of equipment that they said they would inspect. Um, everything went fine with that piece. And then the weigh-in time came and I had two options I was given for weigh-in. You can get full buck naked or you can weigh in in your underwear. Now, 
I didn't like either of those options. But apparently you're not allowed to have on any more than underwear to be able to weigh in. Um, so I chose that option. Thankfully, because I was traveling and I wanted to just be kind of comfy, I was wearing shorty underwear and a sports bra, so it was much less intimidating than it would have been <laughs> in my normal draws. So that was weird, but I'm back at the hotel now. Um, it's going to be a few hours before Darren gets here, so I'm just going to... I don't know, like watch YouTube or something and try to chill out because I feel stressed and tired. So I don't know how much more I'll record tonight, but we'll see. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the morning. Why did I sign up for this? I'm going to fail. Okay.